Hello everyone, this is Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you a quick and fun colorful project I made for myself for the Gina B. Aaron's Designs Design Team Challenge for August. The challenge was hang it on a wall. That could be anything. There's lots of things you might hang on the wall, but I wanted something colorful and bright and cheerful to put above the door in my studio. And my kind of theme this month has been hope because I'm working on hope and so um, I wanted to make some bunting flags and I have a lot and I mean a lot of felt left over from years of making soccer banners if you guys don't know what soccer banners are um, you make a felt banner with the team name and, and you know some different graphics and things glued onto it and then you put it on PVC and you bring it to the field every soccer Saturday and put it up for the team. This is usually for the younger, you know, well, even up through U16. Uh, I've made a lot of them. I mean, a lot. <laughs> Three kids in soccer since they were age four. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's a lot of banners. So I have a lot of, of colorful felt left over. I mean, I don't ever throw anything away, you know, I just keep it. So I thought to myself, what could I, would it be possible to, to stencil felt? I've never actually done it. You know what? If I'd known it was possible to stencil felt, maybe I would have used that technique in some of these banners that I made. I, I cut pieces out and glued them on. Um, and in some cases painted with fabric paint, like, you know, in the little tubes, but I've never stenciled it before. So I took some white felt and cut it into the, some traditional bunting style triangular shaped flags. Uh, bunting is something that you usually hang like on a fence or something, and it just has a solid color often. Um, maybe it's made out of plastic, it's something that you can use for decorating and, uh, I wanted something more permanent, something more interesting, and these four square stencils that Gina has in her Etsy shop are the perfect size for this. They have four little um, designs on, e on each six by six stencil, and some cases the designs can stack on top of each other, so you can do a lighter color, darker color, you know, whatever, they're like multiple layers that you can use together. In some cases, they are more singular, but um, I am using regular heavy body acrylic paint. I've got Dina Wakely um, heavy body paints because she has nice bright colors. And then I didn't have an orange in her, her brand. So I got out some Liquitex Basics. Um, I think that's light cadmium red or something, which is a bright orange. Um, how did I pick the colors? Well, I wanted bright, cheerful colors, but I also had sheets of these colors, which I cut as um, backgrounds for the flags. So I had an orange, a light blue, a bright green, a bright yellow. And I have some letters um, that are, are stick on letters that are made out of fun foam. And I had some in the same colors as these backgrounds. So that's kind of how I chose my color palette. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't so arbitrary. It wasn't so, um, I don't know. I just found the felt and I thought I'm going to make something out of it. <laughs> do you ever do that? You just find some stuff in your craft collection. You're like, you know what? I'm going to make something out of this. And I knew that I needed, needed to make something I could hang on the wall. And I have a space above my door that's long and narrow that didn't have anything in it. So I thought that this would be perfect. So I also picked the colors of the backgrounds for paints as for my main color paints. And I do have this new stencil from Gina, Gina's collection that's, I think she calls it um, color wheel, I think. 
Probably. Color wheel would be my guess. I will put the links to all the stencils that I used in the description box below. You can click right on them and go to her shop and purchase them. I also, of course, will put the link just directly to her shop. She has a ton of stuff. She has everything from stencils and, and rubber stamps to um, stickers and planner kits and she has tons of digital downloads that you can download directly and then use in your art by printing it, printing them out. Um, tons of stuff in her shop. So there's something for everyone over there. <clears throat> so the brushes that I'm using for stenciling, I figured that um, rather than use a sponge pouncer like I often do or a cosmetic sponge, that these little um, toothbrush style makeup brushes would be the best for this because felt is uh, furry kind of. It has fibers sticking off of it and I wanted to coat those fibers. I'm not rubbing back and forth however because that would force the paint to go under the stencil so I want a clean image so I'm kind of pouncing up and down and that that compresses the the brush teeth and kind of presses the the paint into the felt and it's working very well a lot better than I thought <laughs> I really I thought this would not work I was surprised when it worked as well as it did so I'm using the color wheel kind of um, interesting circular shape this is actually my new favorite from Gina's shop, I I just didn't notice it at first. There's so many options of things to get and I didn't really see this one. And then I saw Vicki Brown Messy Table Studios using it in one of her design team projects. And I'm like, oh, I want that. So when I ordered up the new um, Foursquare designs, I also ordered that because I just thought it was really cool. And now it's like my favorite. My favorite used to be the little one she calls seeds or something like that, which to me looked like coffee beans. I love that one too. But um, <laughs> this this new circular one is really cool. And this is the first, it's it's, it's virgin um, voyage getting, getting painty and now it's got lots of layers of paint. So I used it in the background of my flags to add color and I made one for each color background. So I've got orange, green, blue, and yellow. Um, circular design in the background and then I use some of the four squares to make floral patterns and leaf patterns and things like that over the top. I did end up getting out some black paint and some white paint, some opaque white. Those are DecoArch Traditions paints. Um, that's their new line of paint and it that particularly opaque white is nice because it can can go over stuff kind of like a gesso it can cover up stuff underneath that's what I was doing with the one that has the orange circular background but I'm letting it dry so then for details in some cases the detailing comes with the stencil so I didn't have to do any uh, you know pen work or anything because I could just stencil that second or third part over the top in this case, I'm using a Posca pen, which is an acrylic paint pen, to draw in a few details and make these little um, designs. I'm not sure what they are meant to be, <laughs> but I made them into flowers because I figured flowers and leaves make me happy. They are hopeful because they, they always come back in the spring. There's always flowers. Um, after the dark, cold winter, flowers come back. So that's what I was thinking when I was making this. My little stick-on letters, I just stuck them on. I didn't even glue anything. They were pretty sticky. And then to make them stand out from the background, I traced around them and made little um, drawn designs on some of them. I used a white Posca pen and a black Posca pen to do my detailing pen work. Uh, just you know making it fun I used tacky glue to glue down the white part onto the colorful background so that it has a border around it 
which I also think makes it stand out from the wall. My wall is kind of an off-white color. Um, someday I'll paint it something more interesting, <laughs> but for now it's off-white. So I wanted the flags to be able to be seen, you know, on the white wall. So you couldn't just leave them white. That, and also I think they're a little bit heavier and they hang better if they had the couple layers. I was going to get out some fusible webbing stuff and um, stick them together with that but this project got pretty late and I just decided to glue them and that worked perfectly fine. So in the in some of these stencils like that one has little dots on it that can be layered over the top of the flower shape or it can just be used on its own. They're very versatile so I just use that as a dot pattern. This one um, has things that you can layer over the top and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I ended up putting some dot patterns on my white flowers in yellow. They don't actually show up that well, but then I draw around them with a circle later. And then um, used the second part of the stencil that has kind of an, a thick outline and um, put that over the top and made the flowers stand out a little bit better. It kind of looks like a, a paw print. <laughs> this one reminds me of a paw print. <laughs> but I make them into flowers. I also use a leaf shape from a different one. I got them all kind of as a set and I'll have to go and look at the Etsy shop and see if they come as a set or if you buy them individually. I can't remember but I bought them all at once and I just, I have this feeling that they were a set, but I may be wrong on that. You never know. <laughs> I put some of the lighter green on there. And then this one has the leaf and then the little like guts of the leaf, the details, so I could stencil that over the top. Interesting designs and fun and easy to use. Compact enough to travel with you if you want to throw them in your travel bag. Have a lot of options by having four designs on each, six by six. You can put them in your travel kit and take them along with you very easily. So I'm doing some more pin detailing on this one, adding circles uh, around the dots in the center and then adding some stems to make them into flowers instead of paw prints. Paw prints would be nice too. <clears throat> so I made four flags and put the letters H-O-P-E on them. Might have been a little bit better if I'd made bigger letters because when you're looking at the the whole design when you've got all four flags together you don't necessarily see the letters right away. You see the colorful cheerfulness of it, but you don't see the letters standing out until you look at it for a while. So maybe I should have cut some larger letters out of felt and stuck them on. But these other ones were the biggest ones I had in the right colors with sticky backs. And I was in a bit of a hurry, like I always am these days, trying to get everything done. <laughs> So there's the O. It's tracing around it, adding a little bit of pattern to it to make it a little bit more integrated in, into the project. So to finish these up after they were pretty dry, um, in some cases I dried them a little bit with a heat tool, just to speed the process up but um, then I just kind of let them set them aside and let them dry a little bit and then I'm going to need to attach them to some sort of a rope or string or something and I thought about that for a while uh, what would be the best way to do that and I ended up using some eyelets and that would be coming up I have a ton I mean a ton of paper eyelets. 
um, different sizes, a lot of colors of minis, and a few colors of these larger ones. And I decided to use larger ones. And yeah, I got out all the stuff. I had to set these all aside first. <laughs> Put them in order so I could figure out how they went. <laughs> so, eyelets. They're like a metal thing and you have to have a hole and then you put the little metal tube through that that hole and then you flatten out the back side to um, keep it in. Does that make sense? It goes in the hole and then you flatten it out to, to, to make it stay in. Well, I've got two layers of felt here and felt is kind of wibbly wobbly. Um, I thought about just piercing it and putting it through and maybe that would hold the eyelet more tight, but I ended up punching holes because uh, I thought that would be, make it easier. And the eyelets are flower shaped um, yellow flowers. So I have this device here that punches holes as well as setting eyelets. That's its whole point. It's from um, Mem We Are Memory. We are memory keepers, I think it's called, brand. Anyway, I tried it. I tried pressing down. I also tried the traditional method of turning turning it backwards and spreading it with a spreader and then hammering it down. Um, either way that I tried, and I went back and forth thinking, okay, this is better, this is better, this is better. They didn't necessarily stay very well in the felt. So maybe the piercing idea would have been better than punching a hole because I think the, the felt is just too loose weaved. So I ended up on some of them just putting a little bit of glue under the eyelet and that made it stay on better. So that's a little tip. Eyelets don't like to stay in felt. But then I just used some black hemp twine to connect them all together and as I was weaving it through I realized that if I just weave it through two things one it's not going to look uniform because there's going to be a black line on one side and not on the other side and it's going to slide so the way that I did it was to come up through then down and then back up and then then I crossed it back over the front and that made me have the extra line and then I went back through and threaded it so that now it has kind of a loop on the one side and that makes it stay in place. So that's how I threaded it. I hope you've enjoyed this project. A uh, simple thing that you could do so easily. Um, you could do this with kids. You could make something for a baby's room. It would be something really fun. To do so give it a try this is just cheap craft felt you can get it for 25 cents a sheet at Walmart or someplace like that nothing fancy just acrylic paints and some great stencils from Gina B Aaron's designs so that is it for me and there's some close-ups at the end that right there you can see me putting a little bit of glue on that one because it didn't want to stay in um, I didn't want it just floating around on the rope I wanted it to stay in so anyway, yeah, that's it for me. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, share. Bye-bye.